I would just like to um, more so show my um, appreciation to uh, pretty much everyone involved uh, from the side, despite uh, the contract stuff not going the way uh, I had planned for it to go. And like, to, I know there's going to be a lot of questions about. Um, the entire the process and everything like that, and to get on the process, uh, I thought it was it was very distasteful to say the least. Um, wasn't what I anticipated, nor did I like what I expected from the situation. But you know, I'm grateful for the uh, fans, all the loyal fans, and everyone that uh, the players as well in the locker room and the city of Chicago that uh, stood behind me throughout this process, and it means a lot to myself. That's linebacker Roquan Smith from August the 9th asking to be traded by the Bears. He was holding in. He was in camp. He wasn't practicing, trying to get a long-term contract. Eventually, it didn't work out. And he's the first, I think, of this new trend of hold-ins where they just didn't work out a deal. It's time to go get your helmet and play. And he came out and he played well. But now, one day before the deadline, the Bears send him to the Ravens for Second round pick and fifth round pick in 2023 and linebacker A.J. Klein. That's what the Bears get. The Ravens get Roquan Smith without a new contract yet. Obviously, they have the exclusive right now to try to sign him. They can franchise tag him next year. We'll talk about that in a second. But the Ravens inherit the contractual issue, but they also get a player who helps them at a position of need. And the Bears, who aren't horrible, no. in less than a week now, they've shipped – two of their best defensive players out the door. Roquan Smith, clearly their best guy defensively. Robert clearly. Quinn had 18 and a half sacks last year. A franchise record, a hundred plus year old franchise. He set the record. I know the stats only been around for about 40 years, but still 18 and a half sacks. He's gone. Smith was emotional about that when he found out about the trade. Now he's gone too. And, and again, the bears aren't really done but maybe they understand where they are, who they are, and what they're trying to do. I think so. it's an opportunity to take over the division right. post Aaron Rodgers, right. and maybe that's what they're building for. I think that's the that's the point, Mike. I'm glad you went there because I wanted to hit that right there. I think they're just looking at the big picture going, okay, so what? Like, maybe if, like, three miracles happen this year, we might be able to get in the playoffs as the seven seed, right? And we play amazing football and things like – so they went, okay, so what? All right, but we're not going to make a run – to get to like you know the Lombardi Trophy, I think they saw the big picture and said, "All right, well these are that's a guy we're not going to have here, and let's get something for him now and make it happen." And so good for them on that. I think to see the big picture, even though yeah, it might stink in the short term here, but the the story is the Ravens. You know, the Ravens are one of those teams, Mike, that we look at. I look at at least to go, yeah, they might not be in the class of the Bills, the Chiefs, and the Eagles right now, but the Ravens are one team to me that they can win the Super Bowl this year, that they're better than their 5-3 and three record. They've shown moments this year of being a very dominant football team, even in some of the losses where you go, wait, there was two or three quarters in that game where they were clearly the better team, and they just made mistakes that are fixable or correctable. So, you know, and then you go, you add that to the defense seems to be getting its footing. Some of the guys are getting healthy. And, man, now you got Patrick Queen and this guy running around the middle of the field with some big dudes who can kind of get, keep people off them in the run game, and now they can just run and go get the ball. And they're both phenomenal blitzers. And the Ravens aren't a great pass rush front four, but they're creative in their blitzes. I, I, I think this is I think it's a great move by the Ravens. I do. I think the Ravens are a Super Bowl caliber team and this is a, a big time middle linebacker. And what's their weakness? It's the defense. It's Definitely. blown leads. All three losses. Blown lead. Blown lead. Exactly. Blown lead. And now you have a guy that can help put the clamps on. We saw how good he was against the Patriots last Monday night in prime time. We'll get to see him in his debut next Monday night against the Saints in prime time. So yeah, I, I think it's exactly what the Ravens needed this year to try to get more out of their defense and put themselves in a position where they can be one of those teams in the AFC that disrupts the inevitable Chiefs-Bills yes, right, reunion in right. the AFC championship game. Because I could see the Ravens going into Buffalo yeah. or going into Kansas City, playing a team that is thinking about the showdown that's looming yeah, right. and catch them flat-footed, and down they go, and then the Ravens move on to the next round. I, I I don't disagree with that. You know, them and the, and the Tennessee Titans to me have that potential to be that team where you go, what? 
we thought we were getting Allen and Mahomes, and instead we're getting Lamar and you know Derrick Henry in the show down there. Uh, this wouldn't be shocking. I hear you there. But the, the Ravens, you, you said it, they're close. And if they can get Rashad Bateman back healthy from his foot injury, I mean, they, they can be dangerous. The run game's going, as we're seeing. And they got another weapon here with Isaiah Likely to go with Mark Andrews that we saw last Thursday night. He's going to be a part of the offense. And then the other thing that jumps out to me, tough matchup, like you said, this week with the New Orleans Saints, who, uh, you know, I think have a lot of the similar qualities to the Ravens in a lot of ways. But, man, the Ravens' schedule down the stretch, Mike, it, 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 it like, shapes up to where you go – they could make a run, and if they could play just the way they've played really the whole first half of the year without just making some of the dumb mistakes they've made in the fourth quarter, you go, they could make a run here and, and really have a still maybe a say to be a number one seed, a number two seed in the playoffs. I mean, it's a very favorable schedule down the stretch. I don't look at one team down the stretch and go, when they step on the field, I know it's football and they got to play it out, but there's not one roster where you go, well, that team's better than the Ravens. Uh, you know, uh, and I know they got to play the game, so it it's setting up to where they can right. be a major I'm looking player at here. Yeah, you're right. They got the bye after the game against the Saints, Panthers at the Jaguars, Broncos at the Steelers, Browns in Cleveland, mm -hmm. Falcons, Steelers, and at the Bengals to end the season. And yes, two Steelers games and one of the most bitter rivalries in all of football. But what are the Steelers going to be when we I get know. to week? They don't play the first time until week 13 or 14. I mean, the Steelers are in rebuild mode right now. Week 14 is the first game, December 11 in Pittsburgh, and then week 17, January 1st in Baltimore. The, the Steelers are circling the drain at 2-6. and six. So, and, and, and again, write them off at your own peril. But I, I agree with you. It's not like you look at the back end of the schedule like we do with the Bengals and say, uh-oh. You look at it with the Ravens, you say, oh, yeah, here we go. The Ravens are a team that can, can be – one of those, you know, they're, they're around 500, but then win, 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 win. And the next thing you know, they're 10 and three. Exactly. Or, or 11 and four. I could see and, it. And uh, yeah, absolutely. You know, now, yeah, now, yeah. Let's, let's push this forward because this gets fascinating to me. They're, they're only paying 575000 of the remaining Roquan Smith salary. Like $4.8 million being paid by the Bears. The Bears are paying a huge amount of the Robert Quinn remaining salary. Again, the Bears are just – and the the Bears, we talked about this last segment. Look at the NFC. You're not getting in. That seventh seed is going to go to the Packers, the 49ers, or the Rams, or the Seahawks. The Bears aren't getting in. Even though they showed promise last week against the Patriots, this is more of a foundation for next year. And next year is the year they can really take off, and they're getting the pieces in place to do it. So spend the money now. Pay the guys to leave. Get the draft picks and off you go. But for the Ravens, they got to figure out Roquan Smith, who represents himself at a time when they're trying to figure out Lamar Jackson, oh my who gosh, represents right. himself. Right. Right. I mean, well, I guess maybe they're getting good at this. Maybe they're starting to figure it out, although they've yet to work out a long term deal with a guy representing himself. It's possible they already have a deal, kind of wink nod in place with Roquan Smith. The Bears could have authorized compensation discussions between Smith and the Ravens could have done that. I don't know when Smith would have had time to do it, but you got one franchise tag to use. I mean, if we talk about collusion all the time from the team standpoint, and it's not permitted technically, but it happens from the player standpoint, you can do it all you want. I mean, Roquan Smith and Lamar Jackson could say to each other, you know what? If we just both refuse to sign a long-term deal, they can only franchise tag one of us. The other one's going to free agency. I assume between the two, they would franchise tag Lamar Jackson. I assume they would. Right. But this is a tough spot for the Ravens. They have to sign one of these two guys or they risk definitely losing one. And, and Chris, one more point. I, 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 I've heard people say, well, well, if they lose Roquan Smith, they'll get a third-round compensatory pick. Well, are, did they really give up a two and a five in A.J. Klein to get a compensatory pick down the road, a third-rounder? Is that why they're doing it for a half-year rental? I don't think you do this deal unless you think you're going to have Roquan Smith around beyond this year. Agreed. If, if, uh, you're, the goal is to keep him. Yeah. You don't make that move if you aren't trying to keep him. Yes, it's a consolation prize if he leaves, but you're not doing that for, hey, you know what? Here's what we're going to do. 
We're going to go up a two and a five in 2023 and a player to get this guy that we're going to have for half a season. And then he's, he's going to leave in free agency and we're going to get a third round pick in 2024. I don't think that's the plan that they devised when they did this. No, exactly right. I think they're, they're looking at this definitely big picture, long term. This is a great move to further the little young nucleus they have on the off defensive side of the ball as they go forward with the Dafio way and Matubuke in the middle and Patrick Queen, who's very similar to Roquan Smith. He's only in his third year, so they got a few years to kick that can down the road. You got Kyle Hamilton at safety, Marcus Williams, who's hurt. We should be back soon. Marlon Humphrey's still good. So, you know, they have a chance here if they keep a guy like Roquan Smith where you go – you know, minus Calais Campbell and Justin Houston, where you go, they, they have a chance to keep this defense together here for the next three, four years and really build something and 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 really have a dominant defense that way. So I, I'm with you, Mike. I, you know, I, th I would think the plan is to keep both guys. Lamar, the way their team is built on the offensive side of the ball, it's built to have a quarterback like Lamar Jackson running it. And damn, he's fun to watch run, and run it when they, they're healthy and doing it the right way, like we saw last week. I mean, that, that was fun to watch. High-level throws, jaw-dropping runs. You know, you get the defense going. The, the Ravens are one of those teams that 5-3, and three, don't be fooled by the 5-3. and three. Don't be. You know, they, had, they were up on the Bills 20-3. to three. They were kicking the shit out of the Miami Dolphins in blue coverages. And then Lamar had... Two of his worst turnovers of the year down the stretch against the Giants where they outplayed the Giants and should have won the football game. So they can look at it and go, yeah, we're five and three, but we could be really seven and one, eight and no. Oh. And in some of those losses, those are good teams that we like we had moments of like dominating them for extended periods of time. And I think that's why you make the move. And I think that's why it's cool and you know the Ravens. It's fun when Lamar and them are good and the bullies of the Ravens are mad and physical and knocking people's heads off. I'm, I'm, I hope this works out and they make things interesting in the AFC. That loss to the Dolphins. Yeah. It was week two. We're still early in the season. There's a lot going on. And it was in that cluster of 1 o'clock Eastern games. Right. But Lamar Jackson has that 79-yard shot out of a cannon touchdown run that puts the Ravens up 21 with 26 seconds left in the third quarter. Yeah. They're up 35 to 14. If that had been a primetime game, we'd still be talking about yeah, right. the collapse. Right. Unbelievable. And 20 to 3, blown lead to the Bills. And uh, the, the Giants game, they had that 20 one. 20 to 10, I believe, at one point. 20 yeah. To 10. Double digit leads yeah. in three different games blown. And now here comes a guy that's going to help them avoid that yeah we saw what the Ravens are capable of on Thursday night against the Buccaneers. that's right the Ravens are a factor the Ravens are a problem the Ravens are a team that very well could keep us from enjoying Bill's Chiefs part three in the postseason we yeah. saw it in 2020 21 we may not see it in 2022 because the Ravens are going to have something to say about it and the addition of Roquan Smith makes it more likely they're going to have something to say about. Hi, it's Mike Florio. Thanks for watching PFT on YouTube. Hit subscribe for the latest news and analysis from Pro Football Talk.